everyone. Welcome to From Shambles to Shambhala. And I'm Zia and this is Sophie, the little lovebird. And wow, can you believe it? We have made it to winter solstice 2020. And what an amazing, incredible, and insane year it's been. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go! And the winter solstice each year really invites us to just stop for a while um, and to go inside and, and into the darkness and to find that light within us because each and every one of us really has our own sun inside of us and that is our own unique connection to source and every year at this time we're invited to go in and reconnect with that to find that within ourselves when we can't see the light in the outer world and to realize and remember our own inner strength our own resources within and our own inner power and so we're really being asked to maybe take a break from technology for a few days and to find a space whether it's outside in nature or inside in some dark corner we're being called to create uh, a womb space of sorts for ourselves to go within and to just be with the darkness and that pure potentiality uh, that exists at this time of the year to dream our dreams for this new earth and to plant those seeds in the deep dark fertile earth and so this year we'll be celebrating with a special ceremony if you want to stay till the very end of the video and it's really this image of lighting a candle in the darkness that tiny little pinpoint of light that is really symbolic of the solstice. And it's also symbolic of each and every one of us that this, you know, apparently very dark time, literally in the Northern Hemisphere when the, the nights are very long and the days are very short, but also in the story of the earth right now. And many are saying that we're all going through the dark night of the soul. And so this image of this little point of light being lit in the darkness and then another one lighting and then another one lighting until there's no darkness left. And that's each and every one of us with our lights coming on and just remembering and realizing our own source connection and our own inner power that we're being really called to bring out into the world right now. The future is unknown at this point, but each and every one of us has a role to play and each and every one of us has a dream to dream and a dream to share and a dream to plant in this new Eden that we're all growing together. And so we'll, uh, we'll go see Peter right now and see what he has to say. And then we'll reconvene for our bread blessing ceremony. Hi everyone and welcome to the winter solstice. The transition on December the 21st this year from the sign of Sagittarius and into the sign of Capricorn. And here we are in Capricorn in the landscape. We're actually in the head of the goat here. And one of the messages of uh, Capricorn is to make sure that we always focus our attention on our true spiritual calling, using all of the material benefits that we've gained in our lives to take us into this higher expression of our true divine nature, without taking anything away from our daily life, our material life, but bringing our spiritual aspirations to the fore so that we always have the spiritual goal in mind. And that uh, is best symbolized in a way through the symbol of the goat's two horns of Capricorn, one horn being the material, one horn being the spiritual, and integrating them and merging them together into the unicorn. 
So the unicorn is a, is a symbol for this moment in time, this still point, when the sun reaches its lowest point in the sky. And uh, the darkest, shortest day in the northern hemisphere, um, where we return to the light. So it's a rebirthing moment for the sun, and some would believe for the sun, S-O-N as well, the birth of Christ. So this is a rebirthing moment for all of us. And this year we have a particularly special event taking place right on the winter solstice. Uh, and that is the what's been called the Great Conjunction, where Saturn and Jupiter, who've been approaching each other for the last few months, now come into an absolutely precise conjunction on the 21st, very early in the morning Pacific. It's going to be at 2.02 a.m on the morning of January the 21st. So if you get a clear night sky on either December the 20th or December the 21st, then you want to go outside and look out for this conjunction very early in the evening, just after it's completely dark, looking towards the southwest. They're gonna be so close together that the astronomers are saying they're gonna to appear to be less than a fifth of the moon width apart. And if we're really lucky, there could be a coalescence where the two become one. And some people are calling this the Star of Bethlehem as a belief in this conjunction causing that really bright star. Now what does this mean to, for us uh, in terms of our spiritual movement forward is that this conjunction is happening at zero degrees Aquarius. So the two have been together in Capricorn for some time now now they're going to step out together into zero Aquarius. So I personally believe this is an entry point into the age of Aquarius. And the download of uh, spiritual energies, the fifth dimensional frequencies, into form. And so right now it's a great time to be setting intention for what you want for your own freedom in the new world and then begin the journey of bringing these energies down and in over the course of the next few days, beginning on the solstice uh, on December the 21st, early in the morning, Pacific time. But it won't be just one day, this will be a, a, a frequency of bandwidth of energy coming through. And one really neat little piece for the people involved in the Gene Keys is the realization that on January the 10th, there's going to be a triple conjunction. So this Saturn-Jupiter will have moved on from the winter solstice when it's in the 60th Jinki, which is the highest frequency of divine justice. And then it will have moved on and will be joined by Mercury. So on the 10th of January, Saturn-Jupiter will still be conjunct, but now Mercury will join them. And it's going to be happening in the 41st Jinki. And the great significance of the 41st Gene Key is it is the only start codon in all of the Gene Key 64 codes, which means this code must be at the beginning of a DNA sequence if this event is actually going to happen in our molecular biology. So this means then on that day, January the 10th, there is this opportunity for us to step through into the new world, into the new frequencies of the fifth dimension. And my understanding of that is that the age of Aquarius is about the people making the decisions about what life is going to be like. So I would really invite you now, over the next couple of days, right through to January the 10th, to really get deeply connected to what you want your future life to be. The freedom that you seek in your life because the age of Aquarius is about each individual person setting themselves free from whatever is holding them back and that we will create the new world together through the collective consciousness of our own individual consciousness all coming together in the oneness to create this absolutely beautiful world. And we're still going through some challenges, we're still going through restrictions and limitations, which are the 60th shadow gene key. Um, but we're moving now into this beautiful place of divine justice and setting ourselves free. 
So the most important thing for us to do is to hold to the highest possible frequency that we can without getting pulled down into the mud puddle, the, the mire of all the discontent and unhappiness and anxiety that's going on in the world. And just really get clear on what you personally want for your own inner freedom. It's an inner freedom that we're talking about here and how you can bring that into the collective to create this absolutely magnificent world uh, in the next few years. And as I'm sitting here, the sun is just uh, hovering above the horizon on the shortest days, this, this little trio of days, when the sun appears to stand still. So if you come to back to the same location for three consecutive days at this time, the sun doesn't appear to move up or down, it just stands still, which is what solstice means. And then it rebirths itself out as we shift into Capricorn uh, early in the morning on the 21st of December. So this is this really neat moment as the sun is going down to really reflect upon your inner light shining out to bring light out into the darkness. I have no idea what this is actually going to look like in the outer world, but I do know over the next couple of years it's going to lead to a tremendous shift, the shift of the ages actually. So I wish you well in your journey as you step through this gateway, this doorway into the higher frequencies to live your life of freedom in the future. I would like to invite everyone, if you haven't already, if you feel called, you can do your own ceremony or just connect in in your own way to the still point, into the silence and into that deep peace that is so prevalent at this time of the year and to just let it really settle into each and every cell into our very bones because we really need this rest right now we really need to be gentle with ourselves we need to really nurture and nourish ourselves and yeah just to rest it's been an incredibly intense year and we need to keep up our strength. And so one wonderful way to fortify ourselves and nourish ourselves is to do um, ceremony. And, and for this particular occasion, um, we've been called to do a bread blessing ceremony. And a bread blessing ceremony is, oh, Sophie, can hear you. <laughs> It's a variation of the Despacho Ceremony. Um, the Despacho Ceremony comes to us from South America, uh, from the indigenous peoples of the Andes. And there are basically three parts, three layers um, that we'll be working with. And the first is the loaf of bread. And we're working with completely organic, natural materials, things that will just very easily um, break down, biodegrade, and can be easily digested by Pachamama. We start with the base of the bread, and it holds everything else. And it represents the, the lower world. It is the base, it's the foundation, and it holds everything else. And in our energy centers of the body, it represents the belly, and the belly is the source of creation and creativity and then to that we add flowers and we'll be adding two different colors red and white daisies sophie's just going nuts out there the red flowers represent pachamama the divine feminine and the white flowers represent inti taita father son and the divine masculine and bringing those two elements into balance within ourselves and the flowers this middle layer represents the middle world and that's the world that we live in and it is kind of a combination of the lower world and the upper world it's where the two converge and that second layer that middle layer represents also our second energy center which is the heart and then the the top layer the third layer represents the upper world the heavens and the energy center is the crown the 
the pineal, the third eye, and for that we have sprinkles. We have these beautiful candied sprinkles, all different shapes and sizes and colors. There's the rainbow colors, there's stars, there's hearts, cacao and spices and all kinds of mm, yummy stuff that we add to the top. And in the middle, in the center, is our candle. It's a uh, beeswax candle, completely natural. And we also add a stick of incense, copal um, incense. And that just represents the upper world and also the ether. And then once the bundle has been created, we will take it to the ocean and dispatch it into the ocean as uh, as a love bundle for Mother Earth. And when we add each of the elements to our bundle, we, we put our prayers, our blessings, and plant our seeds, our dreams in the bundle. We light our candle in the dark, and then we just let it go into the dark night. And, and then we just rest. We rest in that still point. And we just know and trust we are being held we are being held right now, so lovingly, so gently, by our own selves, by our own higher selves, who are here and completely supporting us through this process. And the more that we're able to rest and care for ourselves and nourish these bodies, um, the more of our higher selves can actually come in to embody this body and live the life that we came here to live. And so with that, with all the love in our heart, we'll go into this ceremony and... Okay, just one sec. <laughs> and so with all the love in our hearts, we'll go into this ceremony and we love you so much and so many blessings to you at this time as we go into the new year of 2021 and we'll see you again next month and next year much love to you all